Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, my dear kids. You are welcome for your English class for today, Monday, 26th of October. This class uh, is English class for third grade. So, my dear kids, be ready, prepare your pencil and your book. Uh, our lesson today is page 36, my dear kids. Yes, my dear kids, as I told you, our lesson today is on page 20, uh, 36. Yes, page 36. As you can see in the picture or in this slide, our lesson is related to the last lesson, is related to the dessert. Last class, I already gave you some information about what is the dessert, what can you see in the in a desert what animals live there and i already give you some questions for example what is the weather like in a desert what is the land like in a desert what is a cactus for today we will study something related to camels yes the camels i don't know if you uh, so any camels before if you can saw in the zoo or in the TV and today we will get some information about what do you know about camels and what parts of a camel's body can you name so open your book on page 36 to see this lesson So, my dear kids, as I told you in the last class, we already talked about uh, the, uh, the desert. Uh, then, after that, I just give you the definition of the desert. And um, then, we already uh, studied some things, uh, animals and uh, plants that we can find in the desert. Uh, today, we will continue our lessons. Uh, after we finish the first uh, lesson in the unit three, today we will take the second, uh, second what we call the second lesson, uh, page 36. So uh, let's start with uh, the text. You can find the text in page 36. This uh, text talking about is talking about camels. So let us see what is the camels and what do you know about camels so my dear kids uh, follow me i will uh, read the text and try to understand what i'm explaining now what i'm explaining now so camels camels live in the desert of africa asia and australia so where we can find the camels uh, camels live in the desert of Africa, desert of Asia, and desert of Australia. They carry people and things across the desert. So they, what's the meaning of they carry? It means camels. The camels or they, uh, they take the pronoun uh, subject pronoun they they carry people and things across the desert before traveling across the desert a camel eats a lot of food and drinks a lot of water the food is stored as fat in the hump on the camel's pack so when the camel eats uh, eats and drinks these foods uh, this food and uh, this uh, this water is stored as a fat in the hump what is the hump is the highest uh, area in his body is the highest area that you can see in the body of the uh, what we call the camel so as i told you in this paragraph 
camels where they live they live in the desert of africa asia and australia where africa asia and australia the camels carry people and things across the desert before traveling across the desert what the camel uh, did the camel eats a lot of food and drinks a lot of water the food is stored as a fat excellent in the hump where they stored in hump on the camel back Uh, let us continue our reading. Uh, second part, after we finish the first part of the text, let's, uh, let us go to the second part. As I told you in the first part, camels live in, uh, the, in the deserts, uh, deserts of Africa, Asia, and Australia. They carry people and things across the desert. Before traveling across the desert, a camel eats a lot of food and drinks a lot of water why because they save or they store the camels store uh, uh, these uh, this food and this water as a fat in uh, it's humble or it's hump sorry it's hump on the camel back on its its back so as uh, the camel crosses the, the desert, it uses it uses it uses the fat in its hump as a food and water. A camel can live for a one week, can live for a week or more without drinking water. At the beginning of the trip, the camel's hump is a big and fat. At the end of the trip, its hump is so much smaller. So, uh, as a camel crosses the desert, it uses what? It uses the fat in its hump. This fat or uh, this food uh, stored in a uh, hump. It's used by the camel during a uh, travel, during his uh, travel. A camel, as you know, can live for one week, whole the week or more without drinking any water until one week or more. At the beginning of the trip, the camel hump is a big and large. It's full of fat. At the end of the trip, its hump is much smaller. Now let us see the picture and parts of body of uh, a camel. So what are the parts of body that you know of a uh, camel? The camel has long eyelashes. His eyelashes is very long. The camel also has lips with thick skin, with thick skin. The camel has long neck, has very long neck. It's not too much, but it's a long neck. Camel also has long legs, long legs. The camel has also what? Wide round feet wide wide round feet why the camel has wide uh, round feet to stand out of or or to it helps the camel um, walk in on the sand walk on the sand so this type of or this shape of feet can help uh, the camel to cross and uh, walk for a long long time the camel has very and uh, most important part of his body is a hump so what is a hump my dear kids a hump is a largest part or it's the highest part of his body in uh, around his back or around his back this part of his back is called a hump a hump uh, 
So uh, what are the parts of body or the camel's parts of body? The camel has long eyelashes. Yes, excellent as the camels have lips with thick skin. Excellent, Osama. The camel has a long neck. Very good, Rauha. The camel has long legs. Wow, excellent, Serene. The camel has a hump. Very good, Abdul Aziz. Um, the camel has wide, round feet. Well done, Muhammad. Excellent. So, all these are camels part of body. Camels parts of uh, his body. Pronouns are words writers use to replace nouns. Let's learn more about pronouns and the functions of pronouns in a sentence. Before we begin, let's take a minute to review what we know about sentences. A sentence is a group of words that tells a complete thought. A sentence has two parts, a subject and a predicate. The subject tells us who or what the sentence is about, and the predicate tells us something about the subject. Sometimes the predicate starts with an action word, a verb. This tells us what the subject's doing. Let's look at a sentence together. The boy threw the baseball. This sentence is about the boy, so that is the subject. The rest of the sentence tells me something about the boy. It tells me he threw the baseball. Those words are the predicate. In this sentence, the predicate does start with an action word, through. Nouns are naming words. They name a person, place, thing, or idea. Nouns can be found in the subject or predicate part of a sentence. Let's take another look at this. In the sentence, the boy threw the baseball. I'm going to divide the sentence into subject and predicate. Boy and baseball are both nouns. Boy is in the subject part of the sentence and it's called a subject noun. Baseball is in the predicate part of the sentence and it's called an object noun. Let's practice with these sentences. On your practice sheet, read the sentences and circle the nouns. Label each noun to show if it's a subject or object noun. Press pause to work on the sentences and then press play when you're finished. Great job! Friend and dog are subject nouns. They tell who or what the sentence is about. Notebook and bone are object nouns. Pronouns are words that take the place of nouns. Writers often use pronouns in paragraphs or groups of sentences that are talking about the same thing. If we always use the same nouns in our writing, readers would feel like they were saying the same thing over and over again. Listen to this group of sentence. Peter called Andrew's house. Peter asked Andrew to come over and play. Peter and Andrew decided to play basketball. That's a lot of Peter and Andrews. This would be a good time for some pronouns. Let's try these sentences again, this time using the pronouns he, him, and they. Peter called Andrew's house. He asked him to come over and play. They decided to play basketball. Doesn't that sound much better? As readers, pronouns help us to read fluently and smoothly. Just like nouns, there are subject and object pronouns. Subject pronouns are used to replace the noun that is the subject in the sentence. I, you, he, she, it, we, and they are subject pronouns. Writers can use these to replace the subject in the sentence. We use subject pronouns in our sentences about Andrew and Peter. Let's take a closer look. Did you notice the subject pronouns he and they? Both pronouns are in the subject part of the sentence and they replace the pronoun that tells who or what the sentence is about. 
Now you try. Read the sentences below. Find the subject of each sentence and replace it with a subject pronoun. Press pause to complete your work and press play when you are ready to check. Welcome back. In the first sentence, Amy ran outside, the pronoun she would be the best choice to replace Amy because Amy is a girl. She is the subject pronoun for a girl. In the second sentence, my mom and dad baked cupcakes, the subject pronoun they is the best choice because they means more than one person, but not including yourself. As you hear and watch in the video, my dear kids, our lesson of today is also related to the very important grammatical structure and grammatical um, lesson is about subject pronouns. What are subject pronouns? These are the pronouns is a place and nouns. These are the pronouns replace nouns. For example, instead of say uh, Aisha, I said she. Instead of said Jana plays uh, Jana plays football, I said Jana. Uh, I say she plays football. Instead of uh, say Osama drinks a lot of water, I said he drinks a lot of water. So as you can see in this picture, subject pronouns, for example, I, the person who speak, I say I am your teacher. When you said you, the person whom I speak to, the person whom I speak to, for example, I said, you are my student, you are my student. Then we have uh, he, the male person whom I speak about. Then we have she, the female person whom I speak about. It, animal or thing I speak about, we, it's I and I other people it means i'm talking about myself then with plus other people i said we are playing you the people or uh, the people whom i speak to and we have also they we have they they the people whom i speak to for example as you can see in the text we have uh, a highlighted or different color word in the first paragraph it they carry people who's they they it means camels camels more than one camel if we have one camel what's what subject pronoun that we have to put we have to put it because it's only singular one camel and camel is animal so it take it it pronoun subject pronoun so we can say a camel can run fast or we can say it can run as fast as horse if we have more than one camel or, one, or more than one cat we can say camels live in the desert live in the desert so we can say they don't need much water they don't need much water so no need to repeat camels can live in the desert camels can drink a lot of water camels don't need to eat a lot of food we have to say change we have to change at the first sentence we said camel the second sentence we can say they because we have more than one camel. So why we use subject pronouns? We use subject pronoun instead of nouns, instead of nouns in the sentences. Yes, yes, my dear kids, as you can see in this grammar worksheet for subject pronouns, you have four subject pronouns, he, she, it and they replace underline words with appropriate pronouns in the box. Use capital letter when necessary only. 
So as you can see what I did with the uh, number one, the man went shopping and bought some box. Then the box were history box. I changed the underlined word with using subject pronoun day. I replaced the noun with subject pronoun. I choose day because we have more than one book. It's not only one book, more than one book. So I have to choose plural day. My sister is studying at the library because my sister has an exam tomorrow. What I have to put Jana instead of my sister, the second one, second word or repeated word, uh, my sister, I have to choose he, she, it or they. Also, you have to follow the same rule. Uh, with the other words since number four, uh, from number four till number 10, you have t these 10 sentences. Number one is already answered by me. You have to check and answer two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Please write your answer in your notebook. So in your notebook, open your notebook, write the date of today. Today uh, is 20. Uh, second, 26th of October, Monday, then write subject pronouns. Please try to write all subject pronoun I, he, she, it, they, we, you, and uh, all these subject pronouns. After that, start answering all these sentences. Uh, start with number two till number 10. My dear kids, we already arrived until the end of our lesson. Thank you so much for you watching. I hope you enjoyed with this class. See you tomorrow to continue our lesson, uh, page 36 and 37. We have to continue answering the questions and read the, the other text on page 37 tomorrow, inshallah. See you tomorrow, my dear kids. Have a good day. Bye.